Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book tag. I think it's called the mid-year book freakout tag. I don't actually remember. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. Let's get started. So what is the best book you've read so far in 2022? I picked three for this because I don't think I can choose one. And I'm also going to try and avoid not saying the same book for multiple prompts, but it's going to happen inevitably. So the books that I picked were The Warrior Prophet by R. Scott Baker. There's always that worry, right, with a trilogy that you're going to have middle book syndrome. Didn't, didn't happen. Didn't happen this time. It was amazing. Then the second book I picked was The Company by K.J. Parker. Oh, I still think about that book. Still think about Knesset. And then the third book was a book that I read recently, and that is The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold, which was just phenomenal. It's going to be really funny because I have a feeling one of the prompts might go outside of the window. And so somebody's going to get a random cue card on their head. Best sequel you've read so far in 2022. So one of them I will repeat, and that is The Warrior Prophet by R. Scott Baker. Definitely the highlight of the trilogy. And then the next one I picked was An Autumn War by Daniel Abraham. This is the third book in the Long Price Quartet. I can't believe I actually read this series, finished this series this year. It feels like it was years ago, but I still remember parts of the book and I still think about some of the characters. So that just goes to show what a phenomenal writer Daniel Abraham is and what a phenomenal series it is. What is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to? I picked two for this, Age of Ash by Daniel Abraham. I've heard it's a bit more maybe urban than some of his other series and then Justice of Kings by Richard Swan which is a book that sounds right up my street. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year The Lost Metal by Brandon Sardison definitely. I read Mistborn Era 2 two years ago and I really enjoyed it not as strong as the Era 1 in my opinion but I thought it was a really solid like detective noir fantasy book and I really enjoyed the main character Though his sidekick annoys me a little bit but i'm very excited to see how it finishes because i don't really know like what there is to resolve i need to read the third book before the final one comes out because i can't really remember much biggest disappointment so i picked two for this one is a fantasy book and that is crescent city 2 house of breath and whatever by sarah j mass probably the worst book i read this year and then project hail mary by andy weir i feel like that book was so hyped and i just didn't get it. I had pretty like, I would say I had high expectations, but I had expectations and they all fell flat to be honest. And then biggest surprise, I picked two for this. One is non-fantasy and that is Stoner by John Williams. I will be having a review of this coming out soon if it's not already out. It's phenomenal. And then the other one is a self-published fantasy author uh, and the book is Shadowless by Randall McNally. I loved that book as well because I just, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but I just loved it. It was so good. That was such a fail. That was also a fail, but whatever. Favorite new author, debut or new to you? So the two that I have to pick that are new to me have got to be R. Scott Baker. He's got to be up there. And Lewis McMaster Bouchard as well. Like she's, she's wonderful. Can't wait to read her like mammoth series. Newest fictional crush or fave romance? I. I don't have one to be honest I, I haven't really read that much romance and the romance that I have read I'm fairly indifferent I'll maybe do the inverse newest fictional crush or favorite romance that I hated and that was the romance in Crescent City 2 go and watch my rant video if you want to know why I hated it newest favorite character I picked two for this the first one has to be Naya from the Prince of Nothing trilogy by R. Scott Baker I still think about that guy absolutely tragic character seriously and then the second one is Casarill in the Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold absolutely wonderful character I adore him like he's just so good a book that made you cry I didn't I don't really cry in books and I haven't cried in any of the books that I've read this year so I'm going to change it to a book that made you emotional and I picked three two of them are non-fantasy one is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson and to be honest with you, he could be a new favourite debut author of mine because he's just such a beautiful writer. And that book is very nostalgic as somebody who is a minority in London. Like you really, it's quite an emotional book. Like you get a lot from it that, you know, you don't really realise maybe when you first start reading it. I mean, I didn't. So that is definitely going to be up there. And then another one is Call Me By Your Name by Andre something something. Um, Andre Asiman, 
the f the film is very popular but in my opinion the book is very emotional because you get insight from the main character in a way that you don't get from the film as good as the film is but it was very emotional it's it's about first love and it's about first love while you're trying to figure out your identity and your sexuality and it's just really good like it's really really good and then the last book is the price of spring by daniel abraham and that is the fourth and final book in the long price quartet that ending made me very emotional um and just like the overall because so many things resolved the overall direction of different arcs just made me emotional it was wonderful a book that made you happy so i recently finished the fellowship of the ring the first book in the lord of the rings trilogy i shouldn't call it a trilogy part one of the lord of the rings masterpiece by tolkien and it just it just made me happy it felt like i was going home it felt like i was seeing my friends and we were having a chat it was lovely i loved it favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year i don't think i saw any i don't know i'm gonna skip this one i didn't actually write anything on it so favorite video you've done so far this year I picked two. I really liked my review of The Thousandfold Thought, which is the first book in the Prince of Nothing trilogy by R. Scott Baker. It was my longest review that I did and I really like prepped for that review, like not tons, but I did more prep than I normally do for a review. And I just, I don't know, I got like so much engagement from the Baker fans as well. And it was just really lovely. I really liked it. It was just really fun. And then my second one was the first video in my self-published Spotlight series, which was the review of Shadowless by Randall McNally. I'm just really happy to be kicking off that little mini series because I want to be giving some love to some self-pub authors. Most beautiful book you bought this year or received? All books are beautiful. Most of them are. But um, no, I picked the Broken Biting First Lord trilogy books they're really nice like i really like the foil on them and i i like the edges i just think they're quite cool yeah so i i picked those and the last question what books or authors do you need to read by the end of this year i mean i'm mood reading massively at the moment so i wouldn't say i've got like fixed people that i need to read aside from what i'm currently reading which is the lord of the rings i really want to read pierce brown this year i think when I go to Portugal in July, I'm going to actually take the Red Rising trilogy with me. I think I own the first two books, I need to get the third one. But I'm going to take that with me and I think I'm going to binge that while I'm there. And then I also want to read Robin Hobb this year, ideally. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would really like to read the first three books in that like mammoth world that she's created. And then the last person that I would really like to get to is Fonda Lee because I just hear so much about Jade City and Jade War and Jade Legacy that I'm like, okay, it's just getting to the point where I need to, I just need to do it. I just need to do it. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what have been your favorites, your least favorites, recommendations that you have from of, of books that you've read in 2022. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let's chat below and I'll see you in the next one, folks. Stay safe as always, take care and see you in the next one. Ciao.